I love a good dinner party. It combines all the things in life that I love the most. So bringing people together, cooking, home decor, hosting, card games. Dinner parties are really creative. So today I'm taking you through every step of the way. We're getting very detailed, sharing tips that I've learned, easy go-to recipes, tablescape preferences, how I craft the menu, everything down to exactly when I send out my invites. I hope you all enjoy and be sure to subscribe if you guys have not already. We're a week out from the dinner party. Something in 2024 that I'm trying to do is to invite less people, essentially. And what I mean by that is I just wanna have more like intimate dinner parties. I can seat 12 people comfortably at this house because I have my outdoor table and then I have my indoor table, which I love and it's really nice for like bigger things. But I don't love when I invite someone over for dinner and like I don't even get to really talk to them at all. So I would rather just keep them smaller and more intimate because sometimes I feel like when they're bigger and you're so separate, it's harder to like curate the vibe, if that makes any sense. So for this dinner party, I'm actually only inviting three people. So there's gonna be four of us. This is my smallest dinner party yet. And I'm such a go bigger go home that I feel like that's just like not enough people. But really it is, and we are doing a like vision board dinner party and we're kind of like doing some business stuff. So it, it is better if it's smaller so everyone feels more comfortable to like talk and open up. You have to think about what you're actually doing at the dinner party and then like you know what I mean like I feel like if we had 12 people we were doing vision boards we maybe wouldn't get as into it people wouldn't feel as comfortable just because there's so many people I like vision boards are honestly like a pretty vulnerable thing so anyways there's gonna be four of us for dinner this is gonna be a very simple easy dinner party I send all my invites out on Partyful if you guys don't use Partyful you need to it's amazing this isn't sponsored I wish I used them for everything but it's a link that you can just text or send or email or whatever it's so easy to make the invite and then you do the RSCP list on there and then it has all the information. One of my like host pet peeves and I don't know why I feel like this has bothered me my whole life is when someone asks you like who all is going and I think just because I know when you're a host there's so much going on that like sitting there and thinking about it and sending the list to everyone day of is just like kind of annoying and also to me I think it just feels kind of rude because it's like are you only going depending on like someone you know what I mean I don't know maybe I'm just like ridiculous I just feel like it makes people feel like they're not good enough to go and they're trying to see if other people are cool and you know what i'm saying i don't know but it is nice to know who's going for carpooling reasons and other things and like talking about what you're wearing i get it party full is really awesome for that point because it shows the guest list and it shows who all is confirmed who isn't coming who's a maybe it says the time um and then it also says the address and has all the details everything you need to know at that link so i love it anyways i'm sending out my invites, I typically do this around one to two weeks in advance. It depends on how big the dinner party is. So if it was a bigger, maybe Friendsgiving or something, I would send it out two weeks in advance. Um, but just because this is something that this is a smaller group and we've been talking about it, I'm just doing it a week in advance. We are five days out from the dinner party. I should also go through and decide how I'm going to design the table. With hosting a dinner party, you wanna get as much done as possible beforehand, so the day of, it's the least amount of stress. So like I said earlier though, this is going to be one of my smallest dinner parties. I'm really not stressed about this one, but still, I'm doing all my normal steps. <sighs> Guys, look at how cute my mug is. I got it from Texas Treasures. To all my Texans, you know, the store in the mall that you think no one goes to, I do, I go. It actually closed at North Park. Are they still in business? So anyways, let's go to the hosting closet and we can at least decide on our recipes. Our menu, if you will. Also, for bigger dinner parties, I typically will have menus made. I don't know if I'm gonna do that this time. We'll see. And I like to do like place cards and stuff as well because it's cute, it's a little out of touch, it's fun. The issue right now is that I don't know how to use my printer. So I've been going back and forth to FedEx all week already. So I think I might just do it. So I like host. So it's H-A-U-S-T-E. I think they're, it's host.co I think is their website. I'll link it below too. And they have a bunch of pre-designed like menus and place cards and stuff. So you just buy their template and then you just edit it on Canva and then have it printed. It's really nice. Um, and then I know there's someone on Etsy and they're all over. Okay, now we're going to the hosting closet. Okay, here we 
go. Ignore all the frames, y'all. I'm actually working on making a bit of a gallery wall in here. I want to get photos and frames uh, from every single like dinner party and then like hang them up, do a little gallery wall. But I haven't decided if I want to do this wall, I want to do this wall, or I could just do bulletin board and pin them up, but I think I want to frame them. So I don't know, and I'm really preferring more of like an antique style frame, so I don't even know if I'm going to use all of these. You guys let me know what you guys thing. I also kind of want Macy to paint me something. Maybe I'll commission our favorite artist. If y'all are new to my channel and you guys haven't seen this, or if y'all just haven't seen my TikToks recently, I just reorganized my hosting closet. This is the most extra part of my house. And I'm really saying something because I'm just extra in general. So like everything I do, I would feel like is extra. Maybe not like, maybe no, my house do my closet. Okay. You know, to give you guys an example of what I was talking about though, this is a menu from host. So this is my cousin. She didn't make it to this one. So I still have hers. I want to start saving the menus as well and framing those and just using those as inspo. Maybe I put these on a bulletin board and I could do that up here. I just did a little cute bulletin board. And I've also thought about wallpapering this entire room. So we'll see. It's not a room, it's a closet, but you know. Again, like I said, extra. So I was able to customize the actual menu and then change the names, which is awesome. Down here is where I keep all of my cookbooks. Reading cookbooks is actually like one of my favorite things. I'll bring them to hair appointments and go through them and decide. Um, and then I'll typically, if I like the recipe, that's when I write it down in the recipe journal. And then that's what I grab for every single day. We're out of stock on the recipe journals right now, but get on the wait list and follow our Instagram because th they're selling like crazy. So if you want one, definitely stay tuned. Okay, so I want to go through this dinner party project. I got this at Anthropology last year and I haven't even used it yet. If I'm being honest, I am so desperately want to make Ida Gardens engagement chicken again. And that is my favorite thing to make for dinner party. If you don't know the story of the engagement chicken, basically Ida Garden, when she was an editor, or when she was working for the magazine, um, she had this chicken roast recipe. She gave it to a bunch of, like, I think four different girls at work, and all four of them got engaged within, like, four months of making it for, like, their significant other. So that's the story behind it, but honestly, it's just a really good chicken roast, and it's so easy to make, but it's, like, my, it's one of my favorite things, actually, if not my favorite thing that I cook. It's just the best recipe. Like, it's, like, it's the first one I wrote down in my recipe journal. I'm doing wine for this dinner party. I normally would do, like, a cute little cocktail, but I'm also doing dry January, so I'm gonna have, like, non-alcoholic wine options and then wine options for the girls. My favorite wine brands are Winey Baby and Aveline, um, and I have Wine Baby right here, and Abilene, literally right here, guys. See? No joke. Oh, you know what? And I love, oh my god, I didn't think about this. I'm actually not a rosé girl, but I am a rosé girl for Social Bird. I love their stuff, but I feel like rosé is more of, like, I have that at brunch, you know what I mean? Abilene Rosé Wine, Social Bird Rosé. I don't have any right now because I love it. And I also have uh, Winey Baby, and this is Rosé, see? Because it's, like, the ones that I grab for the least. I like white wine, by the way. Not that any of you guys asked or cared, but I love white wine. Anyways, so goes through appetizers, mains, cocktails, salad, sides. Pizza night, tacos, breakfast for dinner. I want to do a book on like all my different tablescapes, but I would need to get like even better, you know? Like, I'm like good at it, but I'm not like incredible, you know? And I feel like with my design for this dinner party, I'm going to go neutrals and then just go crazy with the flowers. This year, I also want to challenge myself to do like themed dinner parties of like five people I don't know. And like we, it's like invited through like a friend of a friend or I like the idea of like a five star weekend. If you guys have read that book by Ellen Hildebrand, basically in that book, this woman invites four different women from four different phases of her life to a weekend at her house on Nantucket. And I just think that'd be such a good dinner party theme too. And like, since I'm home, I could do it. I just think it'd be so fun. Oh my god. This book is awesome, guys. It's like a what should I make for dinner flowchart. I will link this below. I can't believe I haven't done it yet. Oh my god. And it's all sectioned off. That is amazing. We literally have like menus laid out for you. I'm still stuck on doing a chicken roast, though. That's just really what I'm feeling. So, I think I'm going to stick to my Anna Garner roast chicken. One recipe, though, that I'm going to try myself, because I like to try these recipes out before I, like, actually cook them at a dinner party. This looks so good, and it's a great vegetarian option. It's the braised garlicky eggplant with chickpeas and tomatoes, and it says it's very easy and you can make it ahead, and it's vegetarian. So it's a great option to have if you have vegetarian, but also just in general, I love eggplant. I love cooking with eggplant, so I think 
I'm going to try that recipe this week just in general and see how that goes okay so I also hate making salads like I'm trying to become a salad girl so I, I need to push myself to make a salad this one actually okay I like these roasted carrots and then there's this brown rice but again, brown rice is something you can store and make a day in advance. I can start doing these long videos for every single dinner party that I host. And I can do one where I'm hosting like 10 people and you guys can see a more stressful one. Figured this was a better one to start with. Um, this charred lemon broccolini, I love. That looks so good. And then for desserts, the convenient part about having a fire pit is that we just do s'mores. So after dinner, we can just go out, have hot chocolate, and do s'mores, and it's just an amazing experience, and it's one last thing that I have to worry about. But I will say, I just made a peanut butter pie that's essentially a no-bake peanut butter pie. God, I love filming these videos, guys. I'm obsessed with this woman, Ruth, who is hungry for home. I found her on the Homeworthy YouTube channel, which is, like, my current obsession. I love it. She has her Pennsylvania, like, farm, basically. But I bought her cookbook, and there's a peanut butter pie in there. It is so good. It's literally only 10 minutes of baking because you make a s'mores crust, which is it's so easy. It's crushed up s'mores and butter, and it's the easiest thing ever. And then the rest of it, you just mix it all together, and then you put it in your store in the fridge for an hour. It's amazing when there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen for, like, holidays. I mean, it's good for anything because it's so easy to make, and it tastes amazing. But, like, my family on the holidays, there's too many people in the kitchen, and it gets really stressful, and people want you out, and, like, my parents are like, please get out. So that's an amazing thing to do because you don't need oven time. So it makes it so much easier, and then you don't have to worry about it being warm and whatever it's an amazing amazing dessert so if i didn't have the s'mores i would probably just stick to that i'll definitely be doing that this year okay i found the salad i'm gonna make in here it's the carol king salad which you can tailor seasonally which i like i would like to have just like a go-to salad that i make that is great with every single meal for dinner parties because i hate making salad and if i just find one that's like my solid go-to my tried and true, I would appreciate that. So if you guys have good recs, please leave them below. So our menu, Ina Garden Engagement Chicken, the Carol King Salad, the Roasted Carrots, and the Charred Broccolini. Now for alcohol, we're gonna have wine and we're gonna have non-alcoholic wine. For dessert, we're gonna have hot chocolate and s'mores. I always think it's better to have more food than not enough. So I could probably go without one of the vegetable sides, but honestly, like, I'm feeling, I kind of want to do it selfishly because I just want to try a new recipe, too. So, anyways. Okay, our menu is set. I'm going to make a grocery list. And I will do the grocery shopping a day before because there's a couple things that I can prep before. So, I'll prep probably all the stuff for the salad, the dressing. And I have to look and see if there's anything else I want to prep. It's the night before the dinner party. It's 4 p.m. I just finished work for the day, and now I'm in dinner planning prep mode. So, I have all of our recipes written down that I didn't have written down from the book. By the way, last night I actually did end up, I don't know if I mentioned this recipe already, um, recipe testing this for a future dinner party, just in case I invite the one single vegetarian that there is in Texas over my house, I'm prepared. And honestly, incredible. I made a TikTok about it, but it's the braised garlicky eggplant with chickpeas and tomatoes. I just heated it up. It is so good. Like I'm having it for dinner too. I'm just so hungry today, but honestly, highly recommend. I love this cookbook. I'll link it below. So I just wrote down all of my recipes in my recipe journal. I'm gonna go through the pantry before and just see what I need to get. And I'm so excited. This is like my favorite part is the grocery shopping. Well, honestly, maybe not. I like doing it. Um, getting the flowers and stuff. I also just got this new bag and I'm gonna take it. I don't know if this clashes or, you know, it's good enough. I just am such a brown suede girl these days. We're heading off to Trader Joe's and a lot of the recipes that I am cooking tonight have prep options. So I can fully do the rice tonight. I can prep the salad and then I can prep part of the like, charred broccoli if I want to. I don't think I will, but I have the option. These recipes I feel like are just really good staples for dinner parties. That's why I chose it for this week for this video. And I'm really excited. Again, always Trader Joe's because it's cheaper. So I'm packing my recipe journal. I'm packing my camera, my actual person here. I might even do my Ray-Ban and Meta glasses. 
To fill what? I mean business, okay? Sag is massive. This is time to prep for this dinner party. I mean, it's stunning, right? Like, guys, I'm obsessed. Not only am I rewatching Gossip Girl, I'm also listening to Scott Patterson's podcast. It's so weird to see like Luke Danes not super like Luke Danes. I don't know how to describe it. I think going to a grocery store with headphones on is the most therapeutic thing. I'm also really craving the Trader Joe's like chocolate covered peanut butter Reese's cup things. They're so good, I need to get some. Comment below what team you are on Gossip Girl. I am rewatching. I haven't rewatched it fully since I was like a kid. I'm Team Jess. I hate Logan. Like every time he comes onto the show, I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up, you know? Anyways, off the Trader Joe's we go. They had everything besides dill, and I can't remember one more thing that I'll need to stop for tomorrow. I, okay, so these are the meta glasses. Y'all just saw some footage that I filmed with these glasses, right? I totally forgot they also have speakers. So I had my headphones on for literally no reason, and it's so nice because when you're in the store, wherever you're recording, you just hit this button. You can also tell them to do it, but I always just hit this button. Did my voice just crack? Okay. And it records, it stops playing your podcast or whatever, and then the second that it stops, it immediately plays. Like, there's no lag, they're so nice, and it's so fast. Like, I can't, I really just, like, cannot get over it. It's really impressive. I also booked myself a blowout for tomorrow morning. I typically will get a blowout on Thursday mornings anyways. It's one less thing to think about, and on a dinner party day or any day where I'm hosting, you just get really overwhelmed with a bunch of stuff, and I need to get a bunch of, like, computer work done in the morning, so to have, like, an hour and a half, two hours to just knock it out from the blowout chair, worth it. Okay, I'm gonna try something new with my floral arrangement, too. We're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. Okay, back home. I'm honestly exhausted tonight. This week has been a really wild week, but I think what I'm gonna do first is lay out the table just so that's all set and then I can decide what actual um, like vases I want to use so then I can work on the flower arrangements. Thank God, you always deserve a little treat, you know? I just haven't had these, which I'm sure if you have a Trader Joe's you have because they're so popular there. They're so good. Also, I don't know, I got some pitted dates because I love peanut butter and dates. They're so good. All you do is stuff them with peanut butter, put them in the fridge, and like a Snickers bar, but like a healthier version. Unreal. They're basically this, but like healthier. Okay. Mm. We last minute might have one other person coming. I think I actually want to use my grandparents' wedding china. I just got it passed down. 
they got divorced, so I got the china, okay? They got divorced years ago, but the china's still good, you know? So, I'm thinking, which salad bowl do y'all like best? This one's bigger, I think we're gonna have to go with this one. I thought I had a cool toned salad bowl. Huh. I definitely did. I feel like it's kind of a weird vibe with that though. This is like really crazy. This is a very large salad bowl though, so this is going to work. I don't know if I'm gonna regret that. I think I'm gonna be, I'm into this, I really do. It's just like really nice, really classic looking. underneath the plate sometimes like no napkin ring nothing a simple fold in half and then under I might look up some other options but it's not even correct but I like this time it's simple it's easy this isn't like the most decadent crazy dinner party by any means I think this is the way to go obviously I'm gonna replace these I can keep using this and that's the vibe I've replaced these, but I also even have this like mini dish that I haven't used that I'll use for olives tomorrow. It's a little appetizer. And now I can use this for something. I don't remember if these fit in here. Oh, they do, perfect. Okay. Candlesticks are also from Amazon. I'll have all that. Most of my bases are also from Amazon. Um, yeah, perfect. Okay, we're finally getting somewhere. I think it's actually gonna end up looking good. Pretty sure. I these utensils so much that I think I'm just gonna go buy another set. I've been meaning to do this for so long tomorrow at, at home. So I'm not even gonna get the utensils out tonight, but normally I would have everything set completely to the point where like I don't even touch anything the day of. It's all about like taking off the workload on the actual day. Like doing everything slowly throughout the week because it is a lot of work, but it's manageable if you split it up. Also, you can always ask people to bring things. I recently have come to the realization that I have to start asking people to do that. But for this one, I did it just because it's a lot less people and I wanted to film this video. So the friend of mine, coffee napkins are super cute. I might use those, they're pink. These match this display better. And they each have a name on them. It's from Margot Lee's brand, no particular order. I got them for my stepmom for Christmas. And they're so cute, but I think, I think that like, that's cute. It's good to have like cocked not with anything question wise, that's why. Like always, always, always have something to do with the dinner party, like dinner party and something. And it doesn't need to be like something crazy but like a dinner party game, like the card games that I have, or the nightcap card games, like all that stuff. By the way, if y'all are waiting and wanting to buy it and it's just out of stock, stay tuned. We have a lot of upcoming things. They are coming back in stock. Um, yeah, I think that's cute, I like those. So we'll do that. 
And then I'm gonna wash all of these. I'm gonna end up washing all the dishes as well. Um, and the night cat cards match literally perfectly. I was playing with them with my cousin last night when she was over, so. I like it when they're really messy and just kind of all over the place and also that's like all I can do um, And then I have this one and this one which I'll mess with because that's not the vibe But I need to cut it once I actually put it on the table The only thing is you really should have lower floral arrangements and not like this massive one For a dinner party for a bunch of reasons. I'm in the conversation. So we will probably end up moving this one um, Because like you can't see diagonally you know, but I do think it's really pretty. I mean, maybe I'll even move it tomorrow, but like we'll see. This needs to be cut. Like that's ugly, but I'll do it throughout. I like the green. My thought process was, I like the green and my thought process was like, you know, new year, green, new, really poetic I know. This is what we have. I'm liking it. It's easy, it's simple. I'm gonna get new utensils tomorrow. I'm a fan. And the last arrangement I'm doing, I just always do some hydrangeas for the bathroom. The other thing about Trader Joe's flowers that makes them the best is that they last the longest. Imagine once I have my own cut flower garden, which by the way, the garden bed was built a couple hours ago and I can just cut flowers from my own backyard. That's gonna be so amazing. You typically really need four, and they only ever give you three, but it's okay. Oh! We have extra, so I'm just gonna like, kinda mess with this a little bit. So I'm at least gonna make the salad dressing tonight. I don't know how much I have in me to prep, but also, honestly, the recipes that I'm making are pretty simple. So, starting with the, well, I can't even make the rice because I need dill. Anyways, starting with the salad, the Carol King salad, this is the winter version. The dressing is just three tablespoons lemon juice, one tablespoon Dijon mustard, two garlic cloves, one tablespoon salt, one quarter tablespoon pepper, one tablespoon honey, two tablespoons white wine vinegar. I actually can't because I don't have white wine vinegar. And olive oil. All right guys, well normally I really would prep at least like one thing the night before, but I guess I'm just doing all my cooking tomorrow, which is fine because I did mark off tomorrow afternoon to prep. We're gonna be cooking them, but it's kind of nice because I'm like really crouching today. And I need to I need to rest before my guest arrives. Good morning. It is dinner party day. It's 7:30. I'm on my way to my blowout appointment. I have to run a couple errands this morning. I've been waking up at 5 a.m. every day and getting so much done. I cleaned my entire house this morning. So we're pretty much good to go. Um, but I'm gonna go work from the chair. My favorite place to work, dry bar, obviously and we're gonna get going.
I like these and it's a good deal. I Well, I don't like them. That's the issue. It's a really good deal, but I don't like them. I love that it comes with a caddy because I also have to buy one of those. But I really want to get a silver flower set, like antique silver. I'm actually going to try to organize with this and just see how I like it. Because the other one I have that actual organizer, but I feel like this would just be easy for actually serving and bringing it out like from the table to the closet. Here's my blow up by the way. It's extra curly right now just because I want it to last for a week. I love to go on a Thursday morning because in your hair it looks best throughout the weekend. Then you can just like kind of throw it up by like Tuesday, you know? I think I'm gonna prep a little bit of the food now just so I can prep, then clean. I need to take like a 30 minute nap. I've been waking up at 5 a.m. I'm just so tired. Um, and then get going with cooking and stuff later. It is currently 2.20 p.m. and I'm I'm going to do my makeup. I was just getting some work done on the couch and I also made a little menu. No, sorry. <laughs> I made a little schedule for cooking. I can show you guys how I made it, but it's important to work backwards. So when I started doing dinner parties, I feel like the really overwhelming part is like not knowing when to put what in the oven and like getting it the timing right so that it's still warm when the guests arrive. So I separate it by like warm foods, hot foods, warm foods, cold foods. But I used to wait until the last minute to do my makeup and get ready. And honestly, that is a horrible thing to do. Do it hours in advance because typically things come up and you don't want to be stressed and you want to be ready. And I'm always like rushing to get ready and it ends up just not being the vibe. So... Okay, this is not the best thing ever. There are brands that literally will do all of this for you, like Host, H-A-U-S-T-E. You can buy guides and they'll tell you everything you need to do schedule-wise the week of. Um, but this is just easiest for me right now. If I had a printer, that's probably what I would be doing, but I do have a printer. I just can't figure out how to use it. Um, I'm just like, a, I need this stuff and I need less technology in the kitchen. So anyways, um, Cooking schedule, the key is to work backwards. I know that I'm serving food at seven. Really wanna be done around like 6.40, 6.50 because I want things like coming off the stove warm. Chicken roast, charred broccolini, brown rice, served warm. Um, Carol Sing King salad, obviously not served warm. So this is my general schedule. Um, it really helps. And I used to put all the food out here and I would separate it and put like post-it notes on like what ingredients are for what meal. Like I would put them in groups. But I'm not going to do that this time because I'm kind of cooking things one at a time. So I'm just going to grab everything mise in place. Is that how you say that? Guys, I don't know. Um, it just means put all of your ingredients out and measure them before you start cooking because it really makes the biggest difference. And I ignored that for pretty much my entire life until this year. And let me just tell you, it makes cooking 5,000 times easier. So I'm going to make this. I'm going to put all the recipes in the description. So I don't necessarily need to go through it exactly here, but um, I'll give you guys like tips and stuff as I go through. But I'm gonna start with the salad just because I can chill the dressing and things like that. It's gonna be easy. Thank you. 
It's now 3.30, I have prepped the chicken. I have my recipe journal here. This roasting pan, by the way, I just got from Amazon. It's only like $60 and I really like it so far. I think everyone needs to have a good, like, go-to roasted chicken recipe just because it is such a staple and this is so good. Ignore the water, I'm heating it up right now, but I cleaned and dried all of my greens. I have the salad dressing prepped and I'm gonna chop up some stuff for the salad just so it's ready. But this is pretty much prepped. Put my apron on. These are still available, by the way. My breadwinning housewife aprons. It's fabulous. I love it so much. Now 4 p.m. and I just chopped up the toppings that I need for the brown rice. I'm really excited to try this recipe. It's literally titled brown rice that doesn't suck. So if I do end up liking it, I'll also do like a whole TikTok and everything. But all of this stuff is going to be, um, you know what actually, instead of, I mean I know my handwriting is ugly, but instead of putting it all in the description, I'm actually just gonna take photos of the recipes and put it on the friend of mine Instagram or my Instagram. So I'll have that. Linked. The chicken is pretty much good to go. It actually is set. At the end of the chicken, you do a little stuff, like you add some flour and some, we'll, we'll get to that point. Um, but the salad is pretty much good to go. And the rice is gonna be easy. And the broccolini, char broccolini is gonna be easy too. So I'm gonna take a little, maybe like hour break, get back to work. Um, but I'm feeling good about this. These are really doable recipes, like very, very easy. It's 510, I just put the chicken in. Okay, so it's 5.30 and I'm gonna add the rice in. This I can just kind of reheat later. What I thought was interesting about this recipe, I've never done rice this way, is that once you turn the heat off, let it sit before opening the lid for 10 minutes and then adding everything. So I'll keep you guys posted on my thoughts on the recipe. This salad, by the way, is so good. I doubled the pears because I had extra. I haven't even topped it with the rest of the stuff. It's amazing. Like, wow. I thought I couldn't make salads. Here I am. Chop candy pecans, and then I'm gonna um, grate some Gouda. 6.23, I'm gonna get changed. I already put on my outfit. 
very, very casual. Same jeans I was wearing earlier. And then I'm just gonna do a little turtleneck and boots, maybe a belt. Very, very casual. This top is Aritzia. These are my second favorite pair of jeans that I own. I don't know, maybe tied for first. My top two are Abercrombie. These are obviously Abercrombie. They're so good. If y'all ever need links to outfits, I link everything on LTK. And I wear a size 28 in Abercrombie jeans. And I get curve love though, important part. Okay, I feel like my hair, I need my hair to fall, but I feel like this is a great fit where I'm comfy. Oh my god, I have to show you guys these gloves that I got last night. By the way, I've been having my candles burning for a bit, but the guest bathroom is ready. So, okay, floral arrangement, a little candle. The house smells amazing. Wait, time for some fire. I normally have this going all day, but I was cooking today, so I didn't. Okay, back to the apron I go, and then wait until y'all see the gloves that I got, okay? They're called hosting gloves, they're from Gohar World. They're so extra, like to the point where there's even like a pearl on the ring finger. But I mean, they're so amazing. So, I think it's time. Anyways, I was gonna say the charred broccoli is actually, or the charred broccoli, I was gonna say the charred broccolini is an amazing thing to make with this chicken because they're both at 425. So at the very end, you can just put that in there for like 15 and it like works together really well. The rice is definitely, it's been 10 minutes, so I should put the stuff in. Uh, we'll see how the chicken's doing. It's looking pretty good. All right. Because thank God I'm so easygoing and chill, you know? Um, we're gonna have this. See how this goes. <laughs> It's almost seven, but I put on a Nancy Myers playlist. That's always what I do. This one's on YouTube. There's a ton on Spotify. The food is looking amazing. Salad is so good. Chicken's amazing as always. Rice, so good.
I was introduced to this woman, Ruth, okay? And she is from, I think, Hungry for Homes blog. But if I can recommend anything to you guys, like, go watch this Homeworthy video. It was so inspiring to me. She basically, she lives on land in Pennsylvania. She has a garden. She has all this stuff. And, like, the way that she just has her life is, like, my dream, like, my goal. 